From New York City, this is Entertainment Weekly, the show. This week, we're getting it started with Renee Russo, finding our happy place with Christopher Maloney, and making a splash with the cast of The Shape of Water. Plus, the latest Entertainment Weekly is all about X-Men Dark Phoenix, so we're going to see what everyone's favorite mutants are up to. Get ready to go back to X-Mansion, people, because the show starts now. Welcome to the show, I'm Lolo Gnike. Dark Phoenix is on the cover of Entertainment Weekly this week, and in honor of our first look, we thought we'd take a look back at this classic storyline and how it fits into the rest of the X-Men universe. As X-Men fans know, the Dark Phoenix saga originally appeared in 1980 in issues of the Uncanny X-Men. It follows the transformation of psychic mutant Jean Grey into the godlike Dark Phoenix. Written and illustrated by Chris Claremont and John Byrne, the arc has been a perennial fan favorite, popping up in the animated series' third season and on the big screen in 2006's The Last Stand. That film results in Jean Grey's death and officially ends the original trilogy's continuity. However, as fans of the X-Men cinematic universe know, that continuity was reset by First Class, which was set in the 1960s. This new set of events continued in the time travel film Days of Future Past, which showed an alive and well Jean Grey, implying that the events of Last Stand never happened. We got to meet a younger Jean in the film Apocalypse, which is set in the 1980s and stars Sophie Turner of Game of Thrones fame. And in November of 2018, Dark Phoenix will be reborn on the big screen. Set in the 1990s, this version of the Dark Phoenix saga will hew closer to the original and feature an interstellar storyline and appearances by mutant favorites Cyclops, Raven, Beast, and a new mysterious shape-shifting character played by Jessica Chastain. For more info on this film's many X-Factors, you'll have to see it this October. And in the meantime, check out the latest EW cover story by writer Tim Stack. And now, with 2017 coming to a close soon, we'd like to take a moment to salute some of the great shows we lost this year. I give you our 2017 TV show In Memoriam Reel. This night is totally about you and I'm not even jealous. Then let me do this. For some reason, this feels like it's the end of something. I don't think I've ever said this once in my life, but it's nice to meet you. Takes my breath away every time. Appreciate you sharing it with me. I call it Orphan Black. Kiss him. What? Kiss him. I'm leaving to be with my children. I'm ready to go now. Oh, I can see it now. The principal gets eaten by a f tiger, a mascot of the school. I never stop loving you, and I don't think I ever will. Dear shows, you will be missed, and we'll be right back. one of my favorite actresses who's starring in the new film Just Getting Started, Renee Russo. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Morgan Freeman, Tommy Lee Jones, and Cheryl Lee Ralph, and you all in one movie, and you and it's set at a retirement resort home. Y yes, it Was is. Was it as fun as it looked to film? You know what? We had a good time, and I think I had more fun off the set because these guys are, and the women were hysterical, but the guys are like, they're really interesting, both of them. And, and they're kings, mm -hmm. total, yeah. huge personalities, and there were two of them. So we had a good time. Morgan would, he has a beautiful singing voice, and he would serenade everyone in the desert. He'd be singing, and that was beautiful. Singing at sunset was beautiful, and Tommy Lee is a total trip. <laughs> he's like a badass. He's like a bad boy, but, but really what I saw is that he's got a really soft heart. 
Now their characters are vying for your character's attention and it gets yes. really competitive. What was it like to have those two Oscar winners go nuts over you? You know, they're like little boys mm -hmm. fighting over a truck <laughs> and I'm the truck. And there were times that I was watching them and they were like doing a scene. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, I, I, one time in particular, I'm going, oh my God, they've transformed themselves into eight years old. This is so sweet. And I was suddenly in the movie watching the scene and I literally forgot my line. And I know the, the director who I love, Ron Shelton, he was like, yep, that's Renee. I said, I'm so sorry, I was like in the movie. I was watching you guys, you're like crazy. Now, I read somewhere that you almost walked away from this project because it was shooting in Arizona in the summer. Is that true? Uh, look, Ron Shelton sent me the script. I said, Ron, I don't have to see it. I don't have to open it. I love you, you write beautifully for women. I don't have to read it, I'm in. And then he goes, okay, it shoots in August in Arizona. And I thought, <laughs> No, this, and you're shooting outside. I said, Ron, I love you, but you don't want me because I have no internal cooling system at all. Was that literal or a euphemism? Like, I really don't. Like, oh. I, if it's, if I'm out in the heat and it's 78 degrees and I, I'm out there and there's no breeze for more than 30 minutes, I, I have to go in. Anyway. I took the chance and I did it and thank God, but it was an unusually cool summer. What is your favorite project? If you have to look back over oh, all God. the films, I know it's a tough one. No, I, that's a good question. Well, if it's just a challenging pro project, then the Thomas Crown Fair was, because I think I'm, I'm more like, I'm more Tin Cup or Susie from this movie than I am her. Mm -hmm. That's not really who I am naturally, so that was more she of a, was a tough challenge. Chick. She was tough. Mm -hmm. She was tough, but that was, I don't know. I mean, I have to be really in control, and I, I, don't, I tend, as you can see, not to be sort of focused, and I think she had to really focus. So that was a challenge. And then, you know, the Lethal Weapon, they, they were just fun, like often on the set and, and working with Ron Shelton, that's just fun. That's just good fun. So I guess, um, I, guess that, I, guess, I guess Thomas Crown Affair was the most challenging because she, I, I'm the least like, like, you know, sort of her personality. Sexy insurance agent. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I don't use that. I don't lead with that. That's okay. the thing. I don't. You know, I like that's in the bedroom. I don't usually like. There are women. They lead with it. They walk into them, and you're like, whoa, there's sex. There's there's sex. There it is. I'm like, I don't. I don't. I. Some women lead with it. I, I don't. So I had to like sort of focus when I was, you know, between the, the action and cut. Yeah. You were fantastic. Thank, Thank you so you. much for being here. Thank you so much. And Just Getting Started is in theaters now. Check it out. Actor Christopher Maloney swung by recently to reflect on some of his past projects, and these are his stories. Hey, I'm Christopher Maloney, and I've acted in a lot of stuff over the years, so I'm going to tell you about some of it in a segment I like to call A Bunch of Maloney. Get it? First and ten, the championship. This was my first, what I thought, big break. Uh, first time I had a legit job. Uh, it was the first cable television show produced by HBO, and I was uh, the quarterback, Johnny Gunn. Nobody makes fun of Elvis. Whose original name was Vito Del Greco, who was in prison for murder. And uh, O.J. Simpson got me out, because I had a cannon for an arm. Dinosaurs was basically the Flintstones with dinosaurs. You know, I would hear the horror stories, which, you know, I was like, oh, that's too bad, that, you know, they had real people in the, in the suits, 
of the dinosaur suits, and they were really hot, really uncomfortable. They were always breaking down. I mean, it was really, I guess it was kind of an arduous shoot. Nice technique. Uh, you learned that one from your mommy? Yeah. It just came out of left field. I, I hadn't done voiceover work, and basically your work is your rehearsal process, so there's no, like, performance... You know, God, you know, you got to get this. You have to know your lines, and you know, because you don't want to flub the take because it, there's so much money on the line and time and all that stuff. So you know, you just get in the booth and you get to do your your lines. Runaway Bride, uh, I audition and then they call me back and I do a couple scenes with Julia. And after one of the scenes, Julia looks at me and she goes, "Oh my God, aren't you adorable?" I'm just bragging about how good you are. I'm just like, oh my God. That is perfect timing to be saying that right in front of Gary Marshall. <laughs> so uh, I really owe uh, Julia Roberts on that one. Oz, one of the first things they ask of you is if you have any problem with uh, nudity and sexual situations, be it male, female, and all that. I went, oh boy, okay, strap yourself in for a ride. Toby, I love you. I need you. And I was to play Lee Turgeson's cellmate and then evolve into lovers. You know, when they say HBO says groundbreaking, you know, for my money, I was always thinking, well, that's Oz. That's what they're talking about. I don't know. What do you say about Law & Order, SVU? At the time, it was called Sex Crimes. But, you know, Mariska and I had Insta chemistry. You know, just add water. No jewelry. I always carry at least a pair of earrings in my purse. Yeah, like you carry a purse. That's because you carry it for me. <clears throat> yeah, that was a great run. Wet Hot American Summer, you know, you go in, and it, was, and it was one of those rare moments. It might have even been the first moment this had ever happened. I wasn't quite sure I understood the movie when I saw it. Can I make a quick announcement before we finish up? Sure thing. I want to thank all of you for a terrific summer. I didn't laugh. I just looked at it and went... But I knew. I was like, oh, this is the new humor. This is what the younger, I mean, it also was kind of a, a timeline of, oh, I'm getting a little older. More bad guys coming, Nick. I need less bad guys and more good news out of you. We're in a family-sized jar of pickles, Nick. I have no idea what that means. Happy. I got the script for Happy. I read it through. I had no idea what the f I just read. I called Brian Taylor, one of the showrunners, and I said, what, what is this? What is this? Help me understand this world. And he's like, I don't know, I can't tell you. I don't know, let's, <laughs> let's just figure it out. Look at all the traffic we have laid. Merry Christmas. If not the, absolutely the top three funnest times I've ever had as an actor. You can watch Happy Wednesdays at 10 on Sci-Fi. Welcome back. I'm here with the director and stars of the film The Shape of Water, Guillermo del Toro, Michael Shannon, Doug Jones, and Richard Jenkins. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thank you I am you so are. happy to have you all here. I love this film, and I will never look at boiled eggs the same way again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was the pitch? Mute janitor falls in love with an yeah. amphibian monster from yeah, the yeah. Amazon. Yeah. Throw in some Russian River God. spies. Uh, River God. River God. Yes. I, I, how do you convince Hollywood that this is something that they should bet their money on? You know, I've, I've done it the wrong way, which mm -hmm. is I go and, and, and pitch and then get financed eventually to create the, the visuals. And what I did here is spend a couple of years developing the visuals on my own money. And then when I pitched it, uh, they had the main sets already designed, mm -hmm. the creature mostly designed, you know? And, and they could see, because when you say, this is a love story, and you say an amphibian god, you, they go, hmm. But if, the, if you show them what it looks like, what, how beautiful a creature it is, then, and that and the beauty of the picture in the key, key frames, they, they, they said yes. The beautiful thing of the pitch is when I finished pitching it, the story from A to Z, 
and show them pages. They were crying. Really? And, and that's, that's a good signal. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, Doug, what was your initial reaction to the premise? Because on the surface, it does sound a little out there. And I know you all have worked together since the late 90s, so you have a sense of how his mind works. Only on, outer, uh, only on out there movies. Oh. <laughs> only on, on out, out there, there movies. Right. So, so this, this did not sound preposterous to me <laughs> in the least. Right. Uh, knowing that it, that it was going to be uh, Guillermo uh, at the helm of this movie, the, the plots was like, oh, that, I can see this being a gorgeous piece of work. Uh, especially when he when he told me that I'm going to be the romantic leading man of the movie, it's like, well, that's going to be a great movie then. <laughs> Who wouldn't want this? <laughs> but um, but uh, but as as a as a fish man from from the uh, from the Amazon, uh, that that uh, that ups the stakes a bit. Yeah. Michael, your uh, character is a, a scripture quoting sadist, <laughs> who is considered the villain of this film, but I've read some interviews where you said that he's not necessarily a villain. You could actually see him through the prism of being a victim. Well, I don't know. I don't like any of the V words. Uh, victim, <laughs> villain, any any word that begins with V. I'm not okay. a big fan of it. Vegan. Um, vegan. vegan. I don't like vegans. <laughs> veterinarian. Veal. <laughs> you don't like veal. It's a veterinarian caused me... He cost me, he charged me four grand to get the <laughs> ribbon out of my cat's intestines. So, um, okay. I'm just not a fan of uh, V. Okay. V words. But what about general. V words? He's a bully. A bully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a bully. B. Yeah. B? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's Strickland. He's a colonel. I don't know. He's in the army. I mean, they're. He likes a cattle prod. They're tough sons, sons of. You know, whatever. I can't oh, well, another B yes. word. Another yeah, yeah, yeah. B word. Yeah. Um, Sons of bees. <laughs> Sons of bees. I mean, he's just, you know, he's doing his job. I mean, there's, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there may be other individuals on Earth similar to Strickland. Uh, <laughs> right now. Yeah. Your character's relationship with Eliza is just, it's, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And they don't need a language. They can communicate in a way that others simply can't. How special was that for you, playing a character and seeing that, that relationship? It was, uh, it was amazing. And it, it, but you, you have, first thing you have to go to is Sally Hawkins. Mm -hmm. She's extraordinary. Yeah, she's extraordinary. extraordinary. And, and, and the thing about her is, um, you watch her in this movie, you, you know her. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's who she is. I mean, mm -hmm. she's, she's that giving and open and... and um, uh, we became dear friends as as I think she I think Michael scared her to death. But uh, um. no, we were friends. She kept giving my kids presents. Guillermo, you've been working on this script for the better part of six years. Did you have any idea that it would be this relevant right now? That it would. Well, I think if you belong to any minority, this thing has been brewing for decades. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's not like it was not that way before. It is. The fact that it's at a different level of discussion, at a different level of visibility, is you know when you when, when you see the tumor, it's not when you got the cancer, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we are in 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 a terrible path of being divided into a very abstract us and them. We can hate faster now than I think at any time in on on, on the human history. Mm -hmm. Hate faster and wider, and in the more total. Uh, not listening way, not looking way. So the movie is about listening and looking and about love because that's what is really urgent that we say, do not fear the other. Do not believe the ideologies that they're feeding you to reduce a person to one word. See the other person. Yeah. Listen. You know, because the antidote to hatred is understanding. Mm -hmm. Simple. But, but it's very hard for us to do it, you know? Yeah. Those are the words I like, the L words. <laughs> listen, love, you found love. love. Yeah, listen, yes, yes. 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 listen. Latke. Yeah. <laughs> Latte. 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 <laughs> Lola. 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 There you go. Yes. Yes. See? Yes. yes. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. yes. Thank you so much for being here. We like it. Yeah, love it. <laughs> um, the Shape of Water is in theaters now. Go see it.
Welcome back. Actress Meredith Hagner recently dropped by to show some love for her co-stars, and she puts the party in Search Party. Take a look. Hey guys, I am Meredith Hagner from Search Party. This show has such an amazing cast, and I'm gonna tell you why they're so great in a little segment called Co-Star Crush. Alia Shot Cat. Are you guys medicated? Of course. Hey, hold on. Not Alia. Oh, actually, may maybe she does have a preferred. I call her Alia. Alia is crushable for so many reasons. She's an insanely talented visual artist, which she like doesn't tell people about, but if you dig deep enough, you'll find. Everything about my life is none of your business. You guys, John Reynolds, are you kidding? It's like Chevy Chase meets like every great comedian from the 70s. He is so cute, he's such a good actor, he's so funny. He's also just a sweetheart. He's really fun to watch sports games with. I love John. John Early is, when I say like one of the easiest people in the world, he plays these characters that are so high maintenance, but he is so easy and sweet. And he'll be in like 90, 100 degree weather wearing the most insane outfits you've ever seen. And he would never complain about anything because he's just, an angel. Oh no, as long as I'm not exposed to the sun ever again, I'll be totally fine. And he makes the best pasta you have ever tasted. Are you afraid of the truth? Jay Duplass, I got to work with this season. We have a big storyline together. I'm such a fan of his, so I was like already enamored going in, and he's just a good person and a really, really, really amazing actor. It was really fun to work with him. I'm gonna go see what the upstairs looks like. Oh, you're so obvious. <laughs> oh, Claire McNulty, Chantal. Chantal, she does, she plays an annoying person so well and is one of the least annoying people I've ever met in my life. Has a heart of gold, is so sweet and lovely. I love Claire McNulty. I highly recommend having a crush on her. In season two, you guys can expect to bite your nails to the point till they bleed. <laughs> so to see for yourself how great and crushable they are, please watch Search Party. On TBS. Watch it. It's funny. That's our show. Thanks to all my guests. And you can watch my extended interview with the Shape of Water cast on People TV. And don't forget to grab the X-Men Dark Phoenix issue of Entertainment Weekly on newsstands now and at EW.com. Bye.